来啦。Hi everyone, and welcome back to another National Four Maths lesson. Where today we will be talking about circles. We will be going over a brief introduction of what a circle is, the importance of radius and diameter in measuring circles. We will discuss the concept of pi and how we can use this sort of funny symbol to calculate things like the circumference and the area of the circle. And finally, we will have a look at tangents and how these lines are important to circles. Also, okay, so I'm fairly confident that everyone knows what a circle looks like, but it's important to define what the shape is so it can give us a better understanding further down the line. So I've defined here a circle as a 2D shape. Where every point along the edge is the same distance away from the centre point. So to illustrate this, we can see here the centre point, and if we take any random point around this outer edge of the circle, every one of them is going to be the same distance away from this centre point. So here's a few examples of several points along the edge of the circle, and just to illustrate that each one of these points is the same distance away from the centre point, and that is what defines a circle. It's also fairly obvious to describe a circle as being round, but what that means in terms of maths and geometry is the fact that it has no corners. Unlike a triangle which has three corners or a square which has four corners, a circle has no corners, and that's what makes it a unique shape. And in previous lessons, how we've described the shapes, such as squares and triangles, is by the angles that make up the shapes and the lengths of either side. But in circles, we don't have all these things. So we have to use different ways of measuring and quantifying the circle. So to begin, the most obvious one is the centre point, which is just basically the centre of the circle. And in geometry, the outer path of any shape is called the perimeter. But when this applies to circles, this outer path, the perimeter, we call it the circumference. And then the way that we can measure different sizes of circles is by using what's called the radius. And the radius here is just the distance between the centre point and the outer perimeter of the circle. And if we have a smaller radius, then we're going to have a smaller circle. And on the other hand, if we have a bigger radius, then the circle may increase. And because the distance between the perimeter or the circumference and the centre point is the exact same all the way around the circle, then therefore the radius is the exact same all the way around the circle. And that means we can use this. To basically define everything we need to know about a circle, and then finally we can define the diameter of the circle, which basically is just a line which passes through the centre point and connects to either side of the circle. And in maths, how we illustrate the diameter on a circle is just by simply writing a D or having this little symbol here, which is just a circle with a little line through it. It just depends on the person or the teacher that you're working with, but. Both of these things mean the exact same thing and symbolise the diameter. And it's it's very important to remember that the diameter is just double the radius, because we can see here the radius is the line that connects the centre point to one edge of the circle, but the diameter passes through again and connects it to the other end. So we can say that the radius is half the diameter, or the diameter is double the radius. Okay, so here we have three examples with several lines passing through each of them. So the first one we can see here a distance of five meters, and the line goes from the centre point to the edge of the circle. And because that's the case, we can say that this circle has a radius of five meters. For the second one, the line passes through the centre point and it connects one side of the circle to the other, and that must mean this distance is a diameter. So we can say that this circle has a diameter of seven meters. And now this last one, we see that we have a distance of nine meters here. But notice that the line does not pass through the centre point. Therefore, we cannot describe this as a radius or a diameter. It's neither of them. Okay, now we're going to have a look at this thing called pi and the significance of it, and basically how we can use it to calculate things like the circumference. And the area of circles. How it began was mathematicians back in the day were trying to measure the length of the circumference of a circle and the diameter, and they found that if you divide what the length of the circumference was by the diameter of the circle, 
they found that no matter the size of the circle or how big the circumference and the diameter was, it always produced the exact same number and this number is denoted as pi. So for example, what they did was, if they measured a diameter of 2 meters and then the total length around the circumference of the circle was 6.28 meters, you could divide the number of the circumference and the number of the diameter and you would always get the same value of pi. So what this would be in this case was, if we have a circumference of 6.28 and we divide this by 2, this equals approximately 3.14 and it's this value of 3.14 which is equal to pi. Now it's worth noting that pi is one of the funny numbers that we can have as many decimal points as we need after this because it's one of the numbers that just goes on forever and ever and ever. So for example, the real number of pi goes on like 3.141592 and so on. But all we need to remember is that pi is this number here, 3.14. And we can use this to connect the diameter of the circle to the circumference of the circle. And because we said that the circumference of the circle divided by the diameter of the circle is equal to this value of pi. We can rearrange this equation to bring this value of d up over the other side to say that the circumference is equal to pi times the diameter. And that there is the equation to find out the circumference of any circle. If we know the diameter, we can find out the circumference. So when we go to solve problems using pi, there's two ways that we can normally use the number when trying to solve the, an equation or a problem. We can either just type in our calculators the value, the simplified value of 3.14, or there's a more accurate way of doing this using the buttons on a scientific calculator if you have one. On this example, to get the value of pi, you would press the shift button up here, followed by this button down the bottom and what happens is when you press the shift button the sort of little yellow symbols or the little numbers that you can see above each of the buttons is what happens when you press shift followed by this and in this case we can see the sort of little yellow pi symbol right up here so if we press shift and then this button here that will allow us to use the exact value of pi on our calculators instead of just the simplified value of typing in 3.14 so here we have an example problem where we have a circle with a given length of 20 centimetres and we've been asked to calculate the circumference of the circle. Well, so now we know that the circumference, which we can call C, is equal to that value of pi multiplied by the diameter. And we know that from this diagram, this length of 20 centimetres is the diameter because it passes through the centre point and it connects one side of the circle to the other. So we can say that D is equal to 20 centimetres. Therefore we can say that C is equal to, we know pi is always 3.14 and we times that by 20 centimetres. And if we work this out, we can say that the circumference is equal to 62.8 centimetres. So here is another example where we have been asked to calculate the circumference of the circle again, but this time the given measurement we have is 5 metres, and we can see that this time it's not the diameter that's been given, it's the radius because the line connects the centre point to the outer edge of the circle. So we can say that from this diagram, the radius is equal to 5 metres. And we know that the radius is half that of the diameter, or the diameter is double the radius. So if the diameter is double the radius, that means we can say that the diameter is 2 times the radius, which is equal to 2 times 5 meters and therefore the diameter is equal to 10 meters.
And now we have that, we can use the equation to solve the circumference. So we can say c is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter d. Therefore c is equal to 3.14 multiplied by 10 meters. And then finally we can say that 3.14 times 10 is equal to 31.4 meters. So now the area, how do we calculate the area of a circle? Well, this also relates to pi and what mathematicians found was through experiments and trial and error was that we can say the area A of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. So if we draw the radius on here, if we know the radius of the circle, then we can square this and multiply it by pi and that will get us the area of the circle. So a is equal to pi r squared. Okay, so here we have an example problem where we've been asked to calculate the area of the circle and we've been given a radius of six meters. So we can say that the radius r is equal to six meters. And we know now that the equation of the, the area of the circle a is equal to pi times the radius squared, which we know pi now is equal to 3.14 multiplied by the radius squared, so that is 6 meters squared. And this works out to be approximately 113 meters squared, 113 meters squared. Here's another problem where we've been asked to calculate the area of the circle, but this time instead of being given the radius, we have been given the diameter of the circle, which is 5 meters. Now if we want to find the area, we have to convert this into the radius of the circle. So if the diameter is 5 meters, then the radius is half the diameter. So we can say that it's a half times 5, or just 5 divided by 2, and that works out to be 2.5 metres. So now we know the radius, we can say that the area is equal to pi times the radius squared, which we now know is equal to 3.14 multiplied by the radius which is 2.5 meters squared and if we put this into a calculator 3.14 times by 2.5 meters squared this works out at approximately 20 meters squared for the area of the circle. Now the last thing that we're going to look at about circles in this lesson are tangents. Tangents are not part of a circle itself, they're actually a line, but they are very important when it comes to dealing with circles. So a tangent is defined as a line that meets the circle at only one point and lies perpendicular to the radius. So as we can see here, when the tangent comes in contact with a circle, it only meets at one distinct point, which is right here, and because of that, it lies perpendicular on 90 degrees to the radius as we can see here. To give an example of what isn't a tangent, this line here for example is not a tangent because it has to touch the circle at only one point and this line doesn't touch the circle at all. And this line we can see here as well also is not a tangent because it touches the circle at more than one point on the perimeter. We can see here it touches it once here and also once here, therefore that is not a tangent. So to recap this lesson on circles, we said that a circle is a 2D shape where every point on its perimeter is the same distance away from the centre point and that a circle is a shape which has no corners. We said that the circumference is the perimeter around the circle. We said that the radiance is the distance from the centre point up until the perimeter and the diameter is the distance from one side of the circle to another and it passes through the centre. 
We also said that the diameter is double the radius. We now know that the value of pi is approximately equal to 3.14. To calculate the circumference of the circle, it's equal to pi multiplied by the diameter. And to calculate the area, we know that that is equal to pi multiplied by the radius of the circle squared. And finally, we said that a tangent is a line that meets the circle at only one point and lies perpendicular or 90 degrees to the radius. I hope this video has been helpful to you and if you have any questions make sure and drop them down below and until then I'll see you in the next video.